It's wonderful. Work together, work it out, work in it Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> it's hump day. It is hump day. We halfway through the week. We almost there. Hump Hang in there, y'all. We won't be with you long. We just want to drop a couple of jewels, have a conversation about mental health, and duck, take it away. Let them know what we're doing. Today, we are discussing self care. Self care. And, and yeah, self care, self worth, knowing it. The eight pillars of it, and let's go get we'll get into it and discuss it. See between the two of us who has better self care. I think it's me, but whatever. We'll see. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna take care of me. You don't gotta worry about that. <laughs> well, this is mental health and self care. So we're just gonna talk a little bit about how mental health and self care connects. Where's the connection with that? Um. And most of the time, well, this is the new thing. This is the new thing I've been hearing, Ducky. You let me know. Everybody's saying, I'm living in, I'm in my soft girl era now. <laughs> <laughs> we went from hot girl summer, soft girl era. And it's another one that they've been floating around. Right. So uh, everybody in they soft, they soft girl era, that means I'm taking care of me. I'm doing me. I'm making sure I'm okay. I'm emotionally stable. My mind is right and all of that. Um so I'm just learning about it. I guess I'm, I don't know if I'm in my soft or not, but hey, I hear you. I hear you, ladies. That's the good thing. So the one thing about when you talk about self care, you were saying those eight pillars. I actually found seven. So we're gonna figure out what the eight one is. Um, I want to talk about the self care in the energy first. So when you're talking about self care, you're really talking about um, people look at self care different. Like people think self care is uh, getting your nails done, pampering yourself, and you know, taking yourself out to dinner and just doing you, which is which is all good. Like one hundred, I'm I'm I one thousand percent support women that really, really, really uh, keep their hygiene up and real serious about their nails and lashes and all of that. But it's deeper than the physical part. So we want to talk about when we get into the seven pillars of it, it's deeper than just what you see. Because a lot of time, what you see is just the facade of what's going on on the inside of people. So when you're talking about self-care, you're talking about the whole self. Um, that's your mental, your emotional, your spiritual, your physical, your financial part, the environment that you're in, all of that. All of that is your whole self when you're doing self-care. And the one it was four things that they were talking about was the source of energy. And this was real good to me because I was like, wow, I never look at it like that. And they've been telling us our, our whole life. <laughs> our sleep, our breath, the very breath that we're taking every day uh, as a, opposed to physical levels and our state of mind. All the growing up, ever since elementary school, they was like, milk does the body good. Um, Eat your fruits and vegetables. Do this, do that. Um, take care of your teeth. They take care of you. So it's nothing new that they're saying. They've been saying it since we was kids or since the beginning of time. But how conscious are we? Uh, were we? Because now I think people are, uh, people are a little bit more conscious now. And, Don't know and, about, and it's, it's more about awareness. It's yeah. more people talking about it. It's more discussions around it. You know. Yeah, but um, growing up, it wasn't a big night where in my era, it wasn't a lot about um, vegetables and being vegan and pescatarian and and a vegetarian and all of that. It was like, honey, it's time to eat. I need you to eat so you can take your bath, get ready to go to bed and go to school tomorrow. It wasn't like all of that. And for the most part, it was um, good food. Mm, I can't remember having a bad meal. But anyway, um, when we talk about the foods we eat, we want to talk about food, especially... This way got me because especially when you start having health concerns. Oh, Lord Jesus. When y'all start to get older, y'all hot girls out there got to grow up, got to get older. Um, if you do it now, the foods that you eat can be so beneficial or detrimental to your physical health. Like foods that's good for the heart, good for the liver, good for the kidney, good for inflammation, uh, good to fight off um, diseases and stuff like that. 
and we 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 the things that we take for granted are the things we need most the food we eat the but i think it's i think it's because it's convenient right like it's so easy like when you got kids especially people that's raising small kids it's so easy to go just stop and get mcdonald's or stop and get something real quick but it's beneficial to train them up that way already eating fruits and vegetables already aware of um healthy foods versus non-healthy foods and it it sets their lifestyle in place of how they'll be when they get older but if you set the tone of we gonna eat this real quick yada 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 and then then that's how they be that's how they're gonna be when they grow up right. they're not gonna have a a surface right so um that's one thing when we talk that's that one of the energy levels that we're talking about uh the type of foods that we eat the other thing is the breathing part like grown people you just always tell children go somewhere and sit down just go sit down somewhere take a breath <laughs> do you know how important that is <laughs> to just sit and meditate on your breathing just to inhale and exhale that fresh oxygen coming in and that toxic oxygen going out we never thought about it like that but that's another part of your mental health is giving your brain that fresh it's giving your brain that fresh oxygen to operate off of and uh that's another thing that's just a way now everybody want to meditate everybody into their breathing uh but we don't want this to be a fad it needs to be a way of life it needs to be what we're doing it needs to be a part of who we are it's to sit down and just take a minute and say hey i'm just gonna take a minute and i'm gonna breathe like seriously meditate get you some time and just start breathing um the other thing was sleep sleep is something we definitely take for granted you take for granted yeah. <laughs> I'm getting my eight. I'm getting my eight. Well, uh, operating off three, four hours of sleep. Uh, we getting power naps, cat naps. <laughs> we catching a nap in the car. If the if people that's on the everybody on the motor bus, fifty percent, fifty percent, headphones in their ear and they sleep. Uh, cause they trying to get it in. But sleep is a very important part of your self care like doctors are telling people now like you need to get some sleep the like, sleep. Not two hours here and two hours here you need to get a full eight hour whole bodily rest sleep so you'll be ready for the next day that's another part of self-care that we take for granted so we get your food when sleeping help with so much your food needs to digest you need to re-energize it's so many benefits of sleeping but we live in such a high paced society People don't got time to yeah. sleep. I can be making money. Well, I don't got time to be sleep. I can be making money. I mean, they, I'm like, you're going to be making no money if you pass out. Right. <laughs> like, you I, I was like, huh? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. But before you go, you need before to make sure you, you re-energize yourself. Right. right. And the other part was our state of mind. Like, our mind can be mad monkey sometimes. Like, we have so much on our minds, our jobs our houses our spouse our children our relationships whether it's relationship with friends with with your significant other your relationship with your children your relationship with your co-workers uh anybody you connected to your state of mind has to be at a point that you're at peace you know and not chunks of peace like okay i got peace here but i don't have peace here that's when you got to start building those boundaries in that emotional vocabulary because if you want you want peace you want it you can demand peace in your house like where you live where you pay your bills at hey we ain't arguing in here you're not gonna raise your voice in here you're not tearing up my house we're not gonna do that this is gonna be a peaceful place when you hit that door when you walk outside your door and step into the world it ain't your call you know that's not your shot you you don't control that you can't control that but you can choose how you deal with that when you come into those confrontations when you come into those situations that arouse you and want to make you angry and and and, and it live it take up so much head space because people that hold grudges and people that can't kind of release things that stuff is taking up space in your mental head like literally it's always on your brain it's always right there's something to trigger it to make it go to just make you snap and go off on the wrong person for the simplest reason so you got to take care of your state of mind you got to always try to make sure if it aggravates you if it irritates you if it frustrates you if it hurts you 
Like if somebody hurt you, it's okay to let them know that they hurt you. If they made you angry, it's okay to say, hey, you know what? I really don't want to talk to you right now because you just, you just made me mad. So I'm going to walk away and I'm going to let you have that. And be okay with walking away. Yeah. Hey, you, you hurt my feelings. That, that really hurt. I want you to know that you hurt me. And I don't like the way it made me feel. So I don't know. I may talk to you in a couple of days or I may not. But people are know where you stand. You got to have an emotional vocabulary to tell people how you feel. And you got to set those boundaries not to let people all up in your space. So that's another part of just taking care of your whole self. You want to add anything, though? Or are we going to jump into the... Um, well, I do want to say before we move forward, your family, your friends, people, they know your triggers. So you got to know when they're trying to pull one of your triggers. <laughs> And you got to know how to respond without going off the right. deep end. Right. So you got to know those people that's trying to trigger you and trying to set you back and trying to make you want to argue and fight. And um, and just be aware of that. So right. It's going to help you with your mental. Like when people, when you're faced with a challenge, especially your family, like people, like you said, people outside of you, like when you walk outside, people that don't know you, they don't know what's going to cause you to go right. Wrong. So, but people who you can kind of control like people that can they know your boundaries and people can know your triggers so i i have a lot of boundaries and i think y'all my family have done a great job with helping with keeping my boundaries in place <laughs> besides my little nieces they're the only ones that kind of don't listen to my boundaries but everybody else they kind of get it like i need space i need time i need to be by myself right but yeah I don't have many triggers, but people like they know people that know your triggers know when they know, so they won't try to take you off. <laughs> yeah, they know exactly they know what's what gonna make you mad. to say and do. <laughs> now I was I, this is a quick story. Coming home, coming home today at the red light, the light had been green maybe <laughs> zero point two seconds, and the lady behind me just laid <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> So I looked up in the mirror and I just said, you're okay. You're going to be okay. I said, it's all right. Because you can't be that upset with me to blow your horn at me because the light just turned green. Like, why are you so angry yeah. with me because the light turned green? Yeah. You're okay. Breathe. I told, I looked, I said, sis, you can't breathe. Because I mean, where you going? That fact, like, like Oh, yeah. It's like, and it, I'm like, I don't know why people have got all this sudden road rage. And I think people just angry and in a rush. People not stopping to breathe. People not stopping to meditate. People not stopping to take care of themselves. We got to start taking care of ourselves. We really have to start taking care of our mental health. Um, yeah. Because you don't know the state of mind of the other person. Like I told you that it was a killing over there, a road rage killing over there on the north side. Um, going into the quick trip two people they got upset and got out and one shot one and they both were injured i don't know if, the, if they both shot at each other but i'm like that's so senseless like why what's the point yes yes um but when also when we're talking about self-care we're talking about those pillows those, those pillars of self-care we can dive into each one of them we can go into the mental part um and i I think with the mental part that's like you got to create like a a healthy mindset through your mindfulness and your curiosity you got to make you got to protect the mind y'all got to protect your thoughts you got to um you know think outside the box don't be such shallow thinkers people think that everybody's out to get them people think that they got um to prove something to everybody they feel like if i don't do this then they don't accept me you don't you're not saying this but that's the energy that you have um and you got to be intentional about what goes into your mind. This even going on to the TV, to what you're watching and listening to on TV and in music. Now, the movie Deliverance came out. And I've got so many mixed views about it. I haven't, personally, I have not watched it yet. Um, but I have. I'm going to say this, man. We can move on. Somebody made it. I haven't seen it either. I don't watch a lot of Netflix movies. But somebody said... Um, because I know the Christians were in an uproar because of, I don't need, I already been, I don't got to need to be set free from all, I, you know, they didn't want to deal with the demonic side of it. Right, right. And somebody said, it's really no more demonic than you laying next to that, that married man. <laughs> 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 so, 
<laughs> but I think it has a story. I don't think it's just about the demons. I mean, we can't be, as Christians, we can't be so punkish that we can't handle that. Like, we're supposed to be able to fight whatever battle, whatever war that God, whatever is going on around us. But some people just not strong enough to deal with. Like me, I've fought demons. I'm, I'm not, I don't really want to open all that. But I will probably watch the movie because I know it's more than just that. I think it was about a social worker or a child or something like that. I don't know, but I think it's it's not as deep as they're trying to make it. Well, they they making it real deep around me, and I was like, oh, okay. They was like, it's a black exorcist and all of that. Um, but I said we got to see it. <laughs> some people was, but some people were saying I couldn't sleep after that. Like it really bothered me. They was like the movie really bothered their mental space. Yeah. Like, I wish I hadn't watched it. Like, I wish I hadn't watched it. And when um the, the young lady, when the police officers killed that lady and everybody was passing the video around, I said, no, oh. I don't want to see that. I don't oh, when the, the white that. police officers? Yeah. Yeah. I said, I don't want that visual in my head. I can't take that. You know, that's not going to be good for me. So, no, I don't want to watch it. I won't watch it. I'm very cautious of what I see. Or what's before me now? If it sneak up on me and I get a glimpse of it, then I gotta deal with it. Um, but what I'm listening to, things that are going into my mental state, you gotta be careful about that. You gotta yeah. be careful about how you set your mindset. That's how you take care of your mental health. Your mental, your mental health. What people are saying to you, like I said, when people say things that get to you, you need to express that. You need to let it know. Make sure you you in a peaceful place. Make sure you can do it with poise and you can do it out of love or out of at least integrity. Um, so it won't be so confrontational. Not that you're a punk, but you got your anger <laughs> under control. You can't be like that man when Michelle Obama said, when they go low, he said, I go low work. Like, you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> Eric Mays, I mean, rest in peace to Eric Mays. He said, when they go low, I go low work. But we right. gotta go take the gotta high take road. <laughs> I roll. We got to take a high Remember our mental health and our faith that we discussed last time? We got to take the high road, people. We got to take the high road. Um, if you want to add to that, we can move on to emotional. Um, for mental, just mindfulness, self-talk, and if you can support a therapist, see a therapist, take care of your mental health, your mental state, um, if you can. Right. I mean, that's probably one of the most important, like, for you being your right for you to be in your right frame of mind. Take care of your mental. And people gotta, they gotta take your break from social media. Yeah. You gotta take your break have from social media. I don't have on my phone. I don't have no social, my iPad is home. I get on when I come home. When I'm out throughout the day, I don't have no social media on my phone. So if you're trying to call me on Facebook, you won't get me because I don't have it on my phone. You gotta take a break. You gotta take an intentional break from that. I know people fast and stuff from it, from it during the day. You fast, make it a regular fast. Like, hey, at least two or three days out of the week, I'm just gonna take a break from social media. It ain't nothing on social media that important that I won't hear by word of mouth. Cause trust me, if it's something that you need to know or something that's real hot out there, somebody already know about it. And they gonna be talking about it. So, but give yourself a break from all of that all them lies and stuff people telling living fake lives and stuff and trying to influence you take yourself a break from that say you deserve it take your break from that and and meditate yeah to get your mind stronger to meditate on the word of god and meditate talking to the lord meditating uh getting some of those thoughts out of your brain and they say when you meditate every question that pop up you need to address it answer whatever questions you have because 50 million things be in my brain when i try to meditate and at first, I couldn't do it. My brain wouldn't allow me to do it. It was so much on my mind, I couldn't do it. So I had to keep trying and keep trying until I got, uh, and I still, I'm still, i still working on the breathing part. So we're going to all learn how to breathe together for those of us out there that's not breathing yet. Um, but just to get in that calmness and that peace and that calmness to actually answer myself and to take care of my mental thoughts and then get some of that stuff off my brain so I can keep moving forward. So probably now focus on one thing instead of you know, that's what they say with your you mind gotta, is racing, yeah, narrow it down to like one to narrow it to that one thought because it be like what you gonna cook today? What happened over there? Who oh, I wonder if so and so did that. I wonder if I should do that. I wonder what they're doing. I mean like everything just, just take no thought for tomorrow. Tomorrow will take Tomorrow care of itself. Take care of itself. Man, that's the word. In the space, 
That's what you need to focus on. Right. So on the emotional part, oh, and I, I'm, I'm telling people this all the time, you got to come up with some coping strategies to deal with everyday life. When you wake up in the morning, we never know what life going to throw at us. We never know what the situation going to be. We, you might get a phone call, somebody passed away. You might get a phone call, something going on over here. You might find out this. You might get into with it with somebody at the job in your family. That, uh, God knows y'all people that be planning these family reunions behind me. I, I pray for y'all because y'all arguing with everybody from big mama to the nephews. So um, <laughs> you got to have you got to have some coping strategy for stressful situations. Like you got to know what to do when you're angry. You got to know what to do when you're frustrated, when you're overwhelmed, or when you feel all when you're feeling sad. You got to know what to do. What and I ask people all the time. So what's your coping mechanism? And believe it or not, people go people go to alcohol, drugs, sex. They go to all kind of things. Whatever it is, just eating food. Food is another one. But you got to find healthy coping strategies to help you deal with those stressful those stressful situations that like that's gonna happen in life so not if but when so when it comes what's in your box what's in your emotional box that you have built to deal with these things when they come and you got to really take it one day at a time right. i think people try to they try to see the end before they even start progress you got to take it one day at a time because <laughs> it can get it can get heavy and you try to think too far ahead and you can start journaling journaling helps people like if you don't have a person to talk to you don't have that spouse that listen to you or who you can't talk to about certain things which you should but it happens try journaling just writing it down getting it off your chest getting it out your mind and and see what you really feel yep listening to to music, taking you a walk, walking on the treadmill, exercise, riding, uh, taking your drive, whatever makes you happy, whatever calms you, yeah, to be one of your coping strategies. Like, hey, this is too much. This is too much. I need to step away from this. I need to distract myself from this until I'm ready to deal with it. Don't let it linger, cause you, if you, I mean, you let it linger, it becomes trauma. Then it's stuck in the back of your mind. Then you got another problem. Here comes your anxiety and your depression. So you don't want it to turn into that. You want to have those coping strategies to deal with that, to protect your emotional state. You know, identify your feelings. It's okay. I'm telling y'all, it's okay. Men, women, anybody. If you feel like crying, you cry. If you if you feel like screaming and hollering to the top of your lungs, running up and down the street, be careful. Somebody might call the police, and it might be a different situation for you. <laughs> but you need to do so that you can handle yourself emotionally and express gratitude. To right to you know just say you know what uh i am i'm grateful for this i'm feeling like this but god you have been you have done so much more for me tiny dog got that door open and this That's fly is really fly i'm about i want to jump through the screen oh <laughs> <laughs> and he want to come out. i guess because the light right here oh. <laughs> um get you some coping strategies to handle your emotional state yeah one of the next ones, what what you got, dude? What is one of the um, uh spiritual? Yes, your spiritual state. I, oh, my. I don't know how other people getting by. I, I just don't know yeah. what other folks doing <laughs> without <I>, the Lord. <laughs> I really don't like. <laughs> Cause that's, I mean, that's my piece right there. Like, honest to God, I'm not just trying to be over spiritual. Like, that is my piece. Right. Having a right. spiritual connection, like. And that comes with building that relationship with God. That mm -hmm. comes with having life experiences and trusting God, mm -hmm. and you know, having those things. Like when you sharing your life story, or you sharing your testimony, and you start saying, "I go back to," I'm telling you what I know and what I experienced. You know, I can tell you what the preacher said all day. We can read the Bible all day, but I'm going to tell you from my standpoint what God has done for yeah. me. How he opened his door for me when I, I ain't seen no way, don't know. If won't he do it, it's such an underphrase. Because <laughs> well, you be like, whoa. It's like, wow. God, I know this couldn't have been nobody but you. 
because ain't no way this came out like this. It comes out of nowhere. It comes out of nothing. It comes when you least expect it. Um, and building that faith, you got to make deposits. You know, I don't know if everybody believe in God or, or Jesus Christ. You, you know, I strongly encourage you, but do what you do, boo. As a Christian, I'm not going to judge you. But as for me... Everybody and, believe in something. Everybody believe in something. Everybody, even, uh, even the atheists believe that there is no God. Everybody believe in something. I just don't know how they get right. back. I just don't right. believe but. <laughs> Because I can say he ain't let me down yet. Yeah. He, I, I'm not disappointed yet. I'm, I, sta I stand on it. I'm, yeah. I'm standing on it. You know, that's it. I'm rocking with Christ and that's it. I don't, I don't have nothing else to say. That's just me. I'm there. Um, but um, Reverend Ernest made a good point on Sunday. He said, um, we always say that we waiting on God, waiting on God. And he said, God been waiting on us for over 20, 30 years for you to get it together. And you keep leaving and coming back and doing this and doing that and won't fully give yourself your life to Christ. I said, that's a good point because like, he be waiting on us for the longest. Right. And you can wait a little while on God. Right, you know? right. When you <laughs> wait on God, your prayers, he been waiting on you your entire life. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, my spiritual health is, is um, I think that that would be the strongest one for me. Like that, that is the one that I would really want to work on the most because I truly believe uh, in the spirit of God and his grace and his mercy. I believe in that. I, I would take that over everything else. Um, my spirituality, my relationship with God. And to build that relationship, you got to get in your word. You got to pray. You got to worship. You got to praise. You can't get, I mean, you can't know God if you don't get to know God. You can't know what he's doing if you don't get to know him. So you got to get to know God. It'll change your life. Trust me, it'll change your life. All these stressful situations, they still, I mean, we're going to deal with everything everybody else deal with as believers. The world does not change for you when you become a believer. It does not. The end life, you will have trouble. Right. They coming. The troubles are going to come. They're going to come, and they might come a little harder just for yeah. you. <laughs> but you handle it totally different. You handle the situations totally different because you know that it's the light at the end of the tunnel. You know where your help comes from. You know who your Redeemer is. You know who your salvation is. You know that God grants grace and mercy. So you know this and you stand on this. You got to weather the storm. You just got to ride that thing out and but trust the God that on the other end is what I was looking for and what I needed. So you definitely got to, got to um, take care and nurture your spiritual health and your church community, your family, your prayer, your prayer partner. Your accountability partner. You can have an accountability partner. You can have a prayer partner. You can have that friend that get down and dirty with you that can tell you the word, give you the word, say, yes, yeah, sis, I hear you. Uh, and you sound like, you know, you waving a little bit. Let's go back to the word. Somebody to bring you back. Somebody to, to kind of grab your shirt tail and say, hey, hey, that's not who you are. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, you know who you created. You created in royalness. You're a royal priesthood. Somebody that can snap you back into to, to your beliefs and your faith. And um, community, a spiritual community is very important because it's, it's a hard walk to walk along. But when you got community or mentors or people that can kind of guide you. Right. Like, when, like you ain't acting like yourself. Like you need people like that um, to kind of guide you to walk with you when you feel down or feel like you can't make it so building that community of believers is very important yeah so, um, people say stuff by people like you and that believe what you believe yeah and that can pray with you at the drop of a dime yeah you got your club yeah. friends yeah you need your spiritual friends <laughs> your spiritual friends that can pray with you at the drop of a dime baby let's take this to the altar we about to take him to the altar because he ain't doing <laughs> right God got somebody for you. <laughs> I, I told you that was him. I told you God said that was him. I'm just trying to tell you something. <laughs> that ain't him. That ain't the one for you. Right. That ain't your Boaz. Right. <laughs> I keep telling you Boaz was an old man. Y'all need to stop saying that y'all weren't looking for y'all. Right. He was old. He was old. He was old. <laughs> um, um, I think the one that I struggle with most and I and I let you tell the one you struggle with most. I won't tell you which one, but I know I know the one you struggle with most. Um, <laughs> the one I struggle with most is probably social. <laughs> I'm very social. <laughs> oh, but no.
So it's social. Oh. I think I'm pretty good with physical. I like to work out and stuff like that. Social, yeah, that's one of my struggles. And I'm not bad with money. Financi financially, I, I know how to save. Well, well, then I have two that I struggle with. <laughs> <laughs> What's my two would be physical and um, financial. I won't walk to save my life. God knows I'd be trying. Oh my, I just won't walk, walk down the street. <laughs> I, know, I, I, I can't. I'd be like, Lord, help me. Help me. Um, you just got to make um, the first I'm step. Getting better, getting better with, with, with my eating habits. I am getting better with that. Um, drinking water. I'm getting better with that. Vitamins. Mm, hit or miss. I may or may not take them. Um, but it's the physical, the activity, like the walking or the um, jogging, the exercise, the Zumba, yoga, line dance. They don't tell me to do everything from line dance. <laughs> the thing is, you be lying to yourself. I'm like, just get up. Just make the first step. Don't, right. like, don't try to plan too far ahead. Just take it one day at a time. Right. Today, just randomly get up and just go walk. Don't, don't right. be like, I'm going to start tomorrow. I'm going to start doing this. Just get up and just go. If, like I said, just go down the ramp. That's, that's, that's progress. That's the part of that that plays on my mental health, because I'm, I, I can be very transparent, uh, is that I know it's going to hurt because of the osteoarthritis in my knees. So I know it's going to hurt. And when it when I when I be thinking in my mind, oh yes, I'm gonna go walk, man, tiny dog. We're gonna walk to the mailbox. So I'm just gonna walk him down here, walk him back. And in my mind, I was like, you know it's gonna hurt. It's a struggle. When it's a struggle, just getting up, walking to the car because you in so much pain. Going through work all day in so much pain. And then at work, you're hiding that pain because you don't want people to kind of see what's going on with you or you, you you hadn't shared with them that hey it hurts when i have to do this um but the so that's told you to the, walk right the, yeah definitely the doctor said let it hurt but it'll start i got to get the pain under control you got, so you got to trick your mind right into saying it's gonna hurt but it's gonna be beneficial right. in the end Right. And if we don't invest in our health, if you don't invest in your health now, you're going to invest in your health when you get older. So just like we go buy all these nice things and stuff, we have to take care of our our bodies. We have to have to get whatever it is that we need. Go to that gym, do your exercise in the house, uh, walk with the family, walk the dog, yoga. I mean, they got it where you can sit down in a chair exercise. It's really like no excuse. <laughs> you really don't have no excuse. They got the app called Lazy Fit. <laughs> and then going up and down Instagram, there's a lady laying down in bed on her phone exercise. <laughs> this is you. I said, come on, let's go walk. Oh, it's too hot. I'm going to wait, you know, get a little cooler. It get cool, fall, right before winter. Oh, it, it's too it's too cold. I can't go right now. It's too cold. It's the, I, I say, I say, walk, walk the dog. He's going to be stopping too much. Like, right. But <laughs> right. this ain't about me. This, 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 <laughs> you the one saying you can be all open and honest. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's enough. Calvin, Dini, you need to hold her accountable. Come take her walking one or two days out the week. <laughs> <laughs> so, who is another part? And the financial other part is we got to take care of our finances. Everything high, everything costs an arm and a leg. Um, but we have to debt. be debt free. Yeah, you got to be debt free. That's 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 a good feeling to be debt free, and it's a good feeling to be able to move when you want to move. It's a good feeling um, to just know that it's there that you have some kind of financial security. And I'm not talking about just your four one k, your four one k, or just your retirement, your retirement benefits. Yes, we all need that. We all should have that. But I'm talking about your everyday life living expenses from month to month, your budget, your um, how you spend, what's going on out of your house, what's coming in, uh, and even down to tithing. You know, giving your tithes, your first fruit to the Lord. We gotta, we gotta take care of our financial situation because financial finances can be depressing. Finances yeah. can break relationships. 
finances can cause a lot of us to go into turmoil um, and anxiety because, yeah, the love of money is the root to all evil. However, you need money to live, to live and to survive. And the way that we handle our money, the way that we get our money, is 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 we have to be careful about that. You ain't just doing anything to get a dollar. But if you get up and go to work every day, you work hard every day. You should not just have to pay your bills and then praying that you make it to right. <laughs> the struggle is over for us. Yeah. If you believe in Christ, the struggle is over. We got to stop. <laughs> no more struggling. Yeah, they've been singing that song for a long time. <laughs> and whoever that is saying, if you type amen, you're going to have uh, a thousand dollars. I'm like, all right, now, how long it take for that thousand dollars to kick in? <laughs> type amen, boo. So, <laughs> yeah, with exclamation point, amen, exclamation point. Then God, right. hear you. <laughs> but yeah, get your finances in order. We got to get our finances in order. We got to teach our kids how to get their finances in order um so to build that generational wealth because that's something everybody talking about now generational wealth i miss that boat um when i'm gone duck and puff that hey don't quit your job <laughs> <laughs> i'm waiting on my inheritance you i need an inheritance well, uh, <laughs> i'm from the lord <laughs> i need you to be saving right now get your life insurance together <laughs> If you just pay off your debt before you go, I'm because I'm not paying off your debt. You need to pay off your debt before you go, and then we'll be fine. Take care of your finances, people. <laughs> of your care, self care is you taking care of your finances, right? Um, it's time to go. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, this has been awesome. <laughs> We've been talking all for a whole 43 right. minutes. So right. just to recap, the eight pillars is physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, intellectual, environmental, um, social, and financial. Those are the eight pillars of self-care. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your body. It's not selfish to take care of yourself. Definitely. Definitely take care of yourself. Definitely take care of your mental space. Take care of your heart. Protect your heart. Um, protect your emotions. Set your boundaries. You deserve it. And you deserve to be the best version of yourself for not just yourself, but the people around you and the people that love, that truly love and cherish you and the people that, that look up to you and the people that are counting on you. Show up as the best version of yourself. And you can't do that if you're not taking care of yourself. Take care of you first. Love you first, and then you'll know how to love anybody else around you. You'll know how to how to handle them. You'll know how to love with grace, and you'll know how to love with, with real love. Because I really don't know kind of what y'all doing out here now. But, um, <laughs> I mean, like I got so many questions for the Gen X uh, and everybody else out there that's just doing a whole bunch of stuff that I'm just like, Ooh, oh, okay, so that's what we're doing. But anyway, um love you live your best life live your best life because you deserve it you deserve it and, and we wrapping this up <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in to live it out on this wonderful work together work it out working in it wednesday all right thank you guys see you next time go cowboys oh go go foul go cowboys go football foul. season started okay. go cowboys yeah. blue baby cowboy yeah. blue you better be glad you should have said that. I would have worn my shirt. Bye. Good night. <laughs>